Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 17 of my entirely 3D printed Star Wars R6 droid. So I've been doing this for many months. It's entirely 3D printed apart from the electronics and motors. And you can actually download all of the CAD for free. Have a look at part 7A of this series to find out where you can get the downloads and also the Arduino code that powers all of the animatronics and driving. And obviously there's quite a lot of videos in this build series where you can find out how it all goes together and also pictures on the website at xrobots.co.uk slash r6. So last time I sorted out some of the pieces, the details in the head, some of the leg struts and booster covers, but this time we're going to do some cool stuff and put some animatronic arms into the body. The plan is to have something in every one of these cavities, but today we're going to be looking at this particular cavity here. So normally you'd have a side vent in here on R2-D2 type of droids. I've got this bit of a bodge which holds the legs on, which I'm not very happy about and I had to put in due to a miscalculation with the strength of some metal. Have a look back for the leg videos earlier in the series. So the side vent's going to have to be cut in half in any case. What I really want to do is put um, a utility arm in here, which is where R2 has its um, computer interface arm and various things in the movie. But um, there's not too much space to have it retract inside because we've got this centre foot retracting mechanism. It can't really go straight back because of this piece. So um, we need to make something that folds up neatly inside there. So the plan is to have something like a dog's leg that folds up and can kind of lever out. So I've come up with this mechanism that's quite simple, which is um, going to have a base to hold it on and then folding arms. And we're gonna have one of these in each side of the droid. One will be um, a circular saw and one will be a gripper. So on the end of that will be a different end effector, if you like. And it should fold up nice and flat, so it can come out quite some distance. I don't really want it to come out too far because it's dangerous, it'll get snapped off and um, so on when it's spinning round and doing all those things that I do with it. So I made this um, sort of prototype in Lego, but actually it's not too far off the actual size it needs to be. So it'll be, um, probably about that size, stuck in there and levering out. I'm not sure whether it should come out um, pointing directly out of the circumference, probably angled slightly forward and obviously actuated by a servo. I've already got a 16 channel servo controller in the head and another one in the body to wire all the servos to, which is um, fitted in my multitasking code. So um, we need to make a 3D printed thing here. It's gonna be obviously bulkier than that, but um, I've already gone and printed the base there which has the two top hinge points, which will fit in here somewhere. And then we can build the rest of that arm around it. Here's the piece I just showed you, which is the base there that's gonna be stuck this way up into the top of the cavity there. And what we've actually got is some other levers I've designed. So this is a bit like the Lego, but a bit more refined. So we've got two levers, which um, obviously the spacings in their lever points are bigger at the top than they are at the bottom, which means it won't stay parallel. It'll leave it out as I showed you. So we've got um, a sort of centerpiece there and these two outside rods. And um, that means it can all fold completely flat. Then obviously on the bottom of the elbow, which is this piece at the bottom, we can then attach uh, another upright stick to put either the circular saw or the gripper on. So these pieces aren't too stylized, but they are gonna be hidden behind the front piece, which is gonna be nicely rounded off and contoured with the end effector on each one. So obviously these need printing. So got the other parts here laid out for those, which um, are all flat on the print bed. And we can print those on a combination of printers. So I'll get those going on the lols bots. Here are the parts of both arms and I've actually assembled one and I've just used some 6mm studding which is 6mm threaded bar and I've just cut notches in the side there so I can screw it in to make that mechanism so that seems to work fairly well. Now what I need to be careful of is this not turning inside out so if you push it back um, it can kind of get locked the other way so I need to be careful where I put the servo here which is probably on the back of this always pushing this in that direction or on the, on here or on here actually pushing these apart so i have to be quite careful if i put it on the front arm pushing against the back arm then it's still possible to get that jammed so we need to be quite careful but um, i'm going to make the front for it for one of the tool arms 
Then we'll try and get a servo mount made and see how well it works. Here's the tool arm for my circular saw attachment. The um, blade is going to be less like a pizza cutter and more like a saw, although it doesn't really want to be very sharp in case it snags someone. There's going to be a servo mounted in here, so the saw is probably going to turn back and forth. I could hack the servo to make it turn continuously, but we'll see how it goes. And obviously the front is just a holder which goes onto that front piece on the elbow there so it folds away neatly and can pop out and the other side is going to be a gripper which I'm yet to design. Here is the front section which I've added on, so now it does this, and I've stuck that servo in there, it's actually acetone welded in because it's made of ABS as well. I've got a channel down the back there to run the wire down which will neatly travel along the arm, so this will fit in here, and sit like this, and then it will fold out when it needs to be used, and obviously this one is the circular saw, the other side will be the gripper which I need to design, so I need to stick the servo on this. Um, do the circular saw blade and mount it, then sort out the other side. I spent some time trying to think about um, a gripper attachment and I realised I really didn't have enough space where this folds up to actually fit it in so that it can open and close and still fold away. So what I've done instead is design this rather bizarre looking thing, let's just colour it in, uh, which is a sort of probe or a computer interfacing arm which is a bit like what R2 has in the original movies. So that's going to be again attached to a servo, a bit similar to the circular saw servo that will allow it to hinge around so it basically has a wrist as well. So the whole thing will fold out and then the end can move around independently. So that's going to be the feature on there instead of the gripper. And then what I'll do is design a proper gripper attachment and stick that into one of the cavities in the body just above these when I do that. Just waiting for a few parts to print, but while they're printing for the probe arm, I've got the circular saw arm. In fact, I've got both servos attached. So this uh, will rotate outwards and pull the whole, whole arm out. And obviously this is the mounting point. So it comes out to that sort of angle with the circular saw on the end. Here are my final arms with the bits and pieces on, so let's have a look at this one. I've got this uh, circular saw on, which is the worst circular saw in the world. Um, and the reason for that is, is so it doesn't get caught on things, it's mostly a safety thing. In the end I've decided to leave the servo as it is so it will only rotate backwards and forwards and then stop. And that means if someone's hair gets caught in it, it doesn't carry on turning and um, get all caught up or something like that. Obviously the blades on a circular saw normally point in one direction and these don't for the same reason that things won't easily get caught in it. So there we go, that will reach all the way out, turn a few times and then come back. And what I've done on both of these is put these extra little blocks on each side and that's so when this retracts it actually pulls up straight so just does that extra bit to pull this in line which otherwise it doesn't do so that just makes sure it closes properly. So the other one I've got the uh, special feature on the end the computer interfacing arm we're going to call it so again that hinges all the way out and then this is on a separate wrist that rotates on the servo so it can do something or it can stay parallel with the body or whatever I choose to program it to do and on both of these servos I've attached another little greebly that just covers the white servo from the front because it looked a bit out of place and again I've got those uh, blocks to bring it back up so it can pull tight and keep it dead straight and that cunningly fits neatly inside here just below the rod and around all of the mechanism. So there we go, so I just need to mount these in the droid and get them wired up and coded. So my tool arms are mounted in the droid and those are just uh, acetone welded into the frame. And I've now got two buttons on my remote, which are these green buttons, and the first green button activates the little circular saw. And the other green button activates the probe there which looks around and goes away and of course these are multitasking the same as everything else so I can um, open the utility arms and kick these off at the same time and they all work at once.